With all the waiting that the low score challenge brings, I was in desperate need to find something to do. And it turns out that App Bounty not only brings you a wide selection of apps to try, but it also gives you free gift cards for doing so. Seriously, if you're looking to save up for the latest Nintendo games, you can grab yourself some free Nintendo eShop cards using the App Bounty link in my description. If you use code MIROSMM, you even get free credits to get a head start towards your first gift card. Who knows what Nintendo goodies you'll be able to get free of charge this year. Simply open the app and start completing the tasks on the Play and Earn tab. They can be as simple as downloading an app and playing for a couple of minutes, or even just making an account. It's no magic process, but if you complete just a couple of tasks a day, you'll be seeing your first gift card in no time. Again, use the link in my description if you wish to try the app for yourself. You'll be supporting both my channel and your wallet. But what is the Low Score Challenge? Well, our primary goal is to beat the game while keeping this counter as low as humanly possible. Rather than just avoiding coins, we also have to avoid, well, basically everything ever. Coins give us 100 points, stomping on enemies gives us 200 points, collecting power-ups gives us 1000 points, collecting star coins gives us 1000 points, getting the checkpoint gives us 2000 points, and heck, even breaking bricks gives us 50 points. Planning on getting the flag? Have some points. Have any time left on the timer? Have some points. Are there enemies nowhere near you but on the screen when you get the flag? Have some points. As you can tell, this challenge is extremely, extremely demanding, so I'll be using save state to break it up a little bit. But even with save state, this still took me many hours to beat the not very many levels in New Super Mario Bros. Wii any percent. I'm gonna come out right now and say that we won't be seeing a score of zero today. There are three boss fights on our route today, and each one of us had a few required points. Iggy and Bowser Jr. require 8,000 points each, since you can't pass their levels without beating them. Bowser gives us points upon hitting the switches at the end, too. Add these scores together, and we're looking at beating the game with 28,000 points from required boss fights. But other than those 28,000 points, how low can we get the score? Can we keep it at 28,000, or is it gonna rise even higher? Let's find out. Now, there's one thing that makes this run infinitely worse than Sieb's New Super Luigi U run. In New Super Luigi U, entering a level nets you a fee of 50 points from the timer. You wait for the timer to hit one second, grab the top of the flagpole, and accept the 50 points. But in New Super Mario Bros. Wii, we can do one better. We can grab the tippy top of the flag when the timer hits zero seconds. But do you know what else happens at zero seconds? Yeah, that. There is a single frame where you can touch the flagpole at zero. And since you have to hit the top and probably won't have a power-up, it's certainly an experience to say the least. So in this video, I'm not only going to show you how to get through every level with the minimum amount of points, but I'm also going to show you what setups I use to grab the top of the flag within the one-frame window. Starting at 1-1, the path to the flagpole is easy enough. It's exactly the same as it is in the coinless challenge, since we need to enter 1-2 without any power-ups for reasons I'll explain later. Just jump between a couple of coins and you'll be good to go. But then, the dreaded flagpole jump. Guarding the top of the flagpole are several 100 point magnets ready to ruin your day. So, here's the strat I use to avoid these guys. Firstly, I stood at the top of the slope before the final rolling hill. As soon as the timer hit 4 seconds, I did a short hop into a grand pound and slid down the slope. Just before touching the rolling hill, I did a small jump and slid down the right side of the hill. I did a final jump with my increased momentum, and that got me my 0 second finish. Next up, 1-2. We have to be small here so we can twirl away from the coins by the pipe. We have to be small anyway because, you know, but it's important to point out regardless. From here, we can proceed through the level normally until the flagpole. This time, we have to come up with the flagpole setup involving this tilt lift. I tried utilizing the motion controls, but honestly, it was way too tedious. So instead, it was time to work out how to do a triple jump. When the timer hits 5 seconds, we'll jump off this pipe. Perform jumps 2 and 3 on the tilt lift and hope to dear god that the timer's nice to you. <sighs> Next, we got 1-3, and the answer to the ongoing debate. Is Yoshi a power-up? Some people say yes, some people say no. We know that power-ups give us 1,000 points, so if Yoshi's a power-up, he'd give us 1,000 points as well. And yeah, knew it all along. Yoshi's no power-up. Yoshi is a hero. He's also a dinosaur. But now, we have something which is completely and utterly disgusting. You can't really see from this club, so let me show you what's going on above this ledge. Off screen, there's a massive row of coins which block this pipe. Even by dismounting Yoshi, we can't get close to passing this gap. We could get the normal exit, but why would we go through three Koopaling fights with 8,000 points each if we could just grab a couple of coins instead? We could also grab the propeller suit, but again, it would be much smarter to just accept the coins than give ourselves 1,000 entire points. How should we get past this section? Do we? A. 
collect a propeller suit from 1-1 and return to 1-3. B. Get the standard exit, beat Larry twice, Roy once, and take the cannon. Or C. Accept just a couple of hundred points. You have five seconds to think about your answer. Ready, set, go! Time's up. The correct answer was... D. Don't get any points. This is the low score run. Why do you want more points? What is the point in that? I've talked about this in an older video, but I think it's important to explain a little better. In New Super Mario Bros. Wii, Yoshi is pretty broken. To stop Yoshi from being totally overpowered, you lose a lot of forward momentum while fluttering. However, if you already have momentum, Yoshi never loses any in the air. In other words, if you build up speed on the ground, you can let go of the D-pad in midair to retain a crap ton of momentum. Although fiddly, you can use this momentum to reach the secret exit pipe without collecting a single coin, and without grabbing the propeller suit. And for the sake of not being accused of using hacks to get past, here's a clip of me doing it without actually being able to see. Awesome. Now we just gotta... Oh. It's not possible to reach the top of the flagpole without Yoshi. Well, that was a massive mistake. Thankfully, we're not completely screwed yet. We haven't played a game of power-up panels. While it's true that using a power-up nets you a thousand points during gameplay, using power-ups on the map is a whole other story. Match a propeller shroom and BAM! We can fly! This allows us to easily clear the gap in 1-3 and we can prepare our next flagpole setup. We'll be using the setup on most levels from now on, so pay close attention. Stand next to the base of the flagpole. When the timer reaches 2, activate the propeller and aim to hit the top. It's fiddly at first, but it's way more consistent than the other methods we've talked about so far. Assuming you don't get the coins and the cannon, you can move right on to 5-1. Although 5-1 isn't really a threat, the path to the fortress is a complete nightmare. Upon clearing 5-1, our only path forward is through the Stalking Piranha Plant ambush. Collecting the 8 Toad Balloons in the stage automatically kills all the Stalking Piranha Plants and we're left with a mandatory 2,400 points. We gotta find a way to optimize our world map movement to dodge this guy and retain our propeller suit for later on. So, just dying in the ambush isn't gonna cut it. So what do we do? We beat 5-1 for a second time. Doing this opens the path to 5-2. 5-2 is pretty simple to get through without collecting a coin, and the Wigglers don't give us points, so that's good. However, the ending is still extremely annoying. Guarding the flagpole is a giant Wiggler which we can't kill, and grabbing the flagpole with him on screen nets us 1,000 annoying points. I tried everything, but there's simply no way to get this big guy to go away. So what do we do? We beat 5-1 for a third time! Doing this opens the path to 5-3, but there's yet another problem. This time, we have a Bramble blocking the flagpole, and there's no way to lure him off screen. Grabbing the flagpole also nets us 1,000 points, but thankfully, killing him in any other way nets us 200 points. That's still 200 points way too many for my liking, but it was the best I could figure out. And now, it's time for the points to come raining in. We already got 2,000 points from 5-3, but now it's time to collect our 8,000 points from Iggy. Navigating the tower is still pretty tough without collecting a single coin, since now you get punished for hitting the dry bones as well. But overall, it's not so bad and you can enter the Iggy fight. But wait! Don't do what I did. You still get rewarded for time remaining when beating bosses, so it's best to wait for that time to part outside of the battle. I had to wait for it inside of the battle while still fighting Iggy, which was a complete nightmare. Oh yeah, speaking of nightmares, the timer doesn't actually stop the frame you take out Iggy. It takes around 2 seconds to slow down to a stop, which makes this even more painful. After those 2 seconds, if you're still in the air, it'll keep ticking, so be careful. I honestly can't give you a visual cue since the fights are so random, but I did get it eventually. Just give me the 8,000 points and let me move on. Thanks. Does anybody actually like 5-4? I'd assume not since it's an auto-scrolling moving platform level, but you never know. This level was torture in my No Power Up series, but it's even harder now for one simple reason. In this level, the rough stops moving if there's five or more entities on it. Normally that's no problem for us since we can just kill the enemies, but that's not an option anymore. So we have to find a way to beat this level without touching a single enemy and without touching a single coin. Good lord. Luckily for us, it turns out that we can reach the area where the enemies spawn. Some of them spawn infinitely, but some of them don't, so there's a couple of safe spots lurking around. Using our propeller powers, we can jump around the top area and left the rough drift onwards without any of the enemies actually falling on it. No, the real threat comes from the second half of the level. Here, piranha plants fall from the sky. Piranha plants won't just walk off the platform on their own, so you have to make a leap of faith with the propeller mushroom. Where do you jump from? No idea! Sometimes you'll miss, sometimes you'll hit this mob bomb, 
and sometimes you'll find an invisible conveyor belt floating in the sky. Ah, Mario games. Eventually, you'll find the right spot, and you can do the strat we discussed earlier to stay at 8,200 points. But is that really the end of the story? Of course not. We need to reach the ghost house to use that cannon, but now there's vines blocking the path. So what do we do? We beat 5-4 once again to clear the vines out of our face. In my new Super Mario Bros. Wii Coinless video, I said that it was impossible to beat this level Coinless without the Mini Mushroom. But, um, I was wrong. That's good, because I really don't fancy trying to get a Mini Mushroom on top of everything else. But guess what, guys? You wanna know something great? Remember how I said you get points of the enemies on screen when you touch the flagpole? <laughs> After what we just saw, it's hard to argue that New Super Mario Bros. Wii is better than New Super Mario Bros. U. But Seeb, lay your eyes on this. See these bricks being destroyed by something other than Mario? See my score? Yeah, never forget it. Aside from that, 8-1 is still really hard. Since we can't get coins or kill enemies, we have to be really sharp here. There's also a bunch of ninja coins which punish us if we stand in certain places. 8-2 is pretty nice to us, but the secret exit is extremely hard to overcome. In the coinless challenge, you can just use the mini mushroom to get through here with ease, but using a propeller suit isn't quite as fun. You can't run below, you can't jump below, and you can't go over the top because that's where Bowser hides his coin stash. You gotta awkwardly hover around the coins instead. As soon as you reach this power block, it's basically free, but until then, good luck. Ah, 8-7. I've already discussed my distaste for this level in my coinless video, and honestly it's not all that different here. We have a propeller suit rather than the mini mushroom this time, but it's honestly a lot easier this time around. It's basically like how I did it in my new Super Mario Bros. Wii coinless series. We have to take a little look at the goal again though. This time around, we have to awkwardly ground pound onto the base of the flagpole. Since we're a little higher up, the visual cue is a little different than in previous levels. Personally, I try to activate my flight just as the timer hits one second. And now it's time to eat up another 8,000 points from Bowser Jr. But before we do that, we gotta make sure we can get through his airship without any additional score points. It's pretty easy to get through the first section, but things get complicated after the pipe. You gotta try and time a triple jump and activate your flight at just the right time to reach the other side. After sliding around the second half for a bit and playing with the questionable coin hitboxes, we reach Bowser Jr. Ah, yes. Trying to finish with zero seconds on this clock is truly a great experience. Such a great experience that you'll be experiencing it forever. Seriously, I couldn't get the time to stop on zero. So I decided to dig a little deeper, and I came across this tool-assisted run of the exact same challenge. I was relieved to see that this person also had a score of 22,200 points, but I noted that they also couldn't stop the timer on zero. It seems very strange to me that the game won't allow you to end the fight on that frame when it works just fine in the Iggy battle but regardless, we'll have to accept an additional 50 points if we want to reach the final castle. You know, I really hope there's no, like, weird complication that's gonna stop me from getting through. Uh, cause every time I say that I hope there's not gonna be anything blocking my path, there's always something blocking my path, almost as if this is scripted or something. Like, imagine if we, like, got to the end and then there were coins blocking the pipe. Oh look, there's coins blocking the pipe. But, we don't have a mini mushroom. So, there's a massive problem. We screwed up. On our route, there is one level containing a mini mushroom. That level is 5 Toad House. But no matter how many times we recomplete 5 1, we will never be able to avoid the stalking piranha plant on the world map. That is, unless we have a star. If you use a star on the world map, you don't have to go to the enemy ambush levels. So, how do we get a star on the world map? Not the star house would have to deal with this monstrosity in 1-3. No, the place we get a star is the Red Toad House in World 1. Remember when we grabbed our propeller suit? Yeah, there were stars in that too. Stars which we simply don't have right now. And there's no way for us to go back and get one since the Toad House is long gone. So yeah, we're forced to get coins in our run, but the proven lowest possible score is a little lower since you can use the Mini Mushroom instead. I could replay the entire challenge again, but I'd rather spend the next 5 hours of my life doing something other than finding flagpole setups and playing 5-1 over and over. But with that, we can get the 12,000 points we knew we'd get from the Switches, and we can get 50 more timer points because the Switch sucks giant firebar. And that's it. The lowest possible score in New Super Mario Bros. Wii is 43,300 points. 
Not really the most impressive looking score in the world, but when you see the work that goes into researching it, maybe you can appreciate it that extra bit more. Shoutouts to this username I once tried to pronounce for doing the challenge before me. Towards the end of my run, I was using this video to fact check my research. But with that, I'll be done here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye!